In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can get the data from a text file transferred to our program and stored in an array. When we look at our depot planning sheet, if we start with output, we can see we want to display all of the contents of that array in a list box, simply to check that our code did actually work. So we go up to input and we see, well, where is that data coming from? In this case, it's not someone typing in a text box. It's actually coming from a preset list of words in a text file. Our processing here is that we're going to combine the stream reader object with a do loop. So that means that on every iteration of the loop, the stream reader object is going to grab one word at a time or one line at a time from the text file and put it into our program. From there, we can actually put that into an element of the array. So when I look at my declarations, I can see that I need at least three variable declarations. When I come to my code, I may find I need more or even less, but this is what I've got so far. We've got a stream reader object that's going to be responsible for transferring the data line by line from the text file to the program. I'm going to use a variable here just to itemize the steps to make it really clear what's happening is that with each word or line that we grab from the text file is going to go into this variable. I could have gone straight to the array here, um, but as I said, I'm just trying to itemize the steps. So as well as a, a variable that can store one line of data at a time, words the array can store all of the data from the text file. So let's go and have a look at the code. I want to have all the code behind the button, so let's double click load array. And because I want to use a stream reader object, I'm going to go up here and above public class form one, I'm going to type imports system.io. I've just imported the input output library from the .NET framework. This means that I can use things like stream reader and stream writer to read and write data to text files. And it means I don't have to keep putting system.io in front of my stream reader name every time I want to use it. So obviously the first thing I need is some declarations. Now notice that I haven't written a path to the file, words.txt. That's because over here in Solution Explorer, I've clicked the second icon on the left, Show All Files, and then I've literally clicked and dragged words.txt, which was originally sitting here under form1.vb, and I've clicked and dragged it into the bin B debug folder. The bin or binary file contains the machine code that's going to run when we press F5 and test our program. This is great for development purposes. It means I don't have to write a path to the file name. I just need to put the file name itself as a string. Um, but if I was wanting to actually distribute this program and compile it, run it on different machines, then I'd have to use the resources file instead. Now I need my other declarations that I know so far. So each word or line from the text file is going to go into the word variable. So I'm going to initialize that to be empty first of all. And then I need my array. Now I know that I've got 10 words in my text file, and so my upper bound is going to be 9. Now we need to do the processing, and this is actually going to get our input, process that input by transferring it um, from the text file into a variable and then into an array. As I said, we could have bypassed the variable and gone straight from the text file to the array, but I just want to make the steps really, really clear here. And then I'm also going to incorporate some output into this loop as well. So I'm going to use a do loop. I could use do unwhile or do until. Either or is fine. Now remember, this line simply says when the peak method of the stream reader object returns the value negative 1, that's the equivalent of saying, hey, I've got all the words. There's nothing else to grab and transfer across, so we're done you can stop repeating the loop.
So let's do as the comment says here. We're going to place into the variable called word a single line of code, sorry, a single line of data from the text file. So in the first iteration of the loop, the word achievement is going to be transferred into the variable called word. The second iteration of the loop, the word consideration is going to be grabbed and again transferred into the variable called word. Now we want to add this word to an array. So again, it's a simple assignment statement. So we place the array name. And then what are we placing into it? The value of a word. Now you can see I've got an error that occurs. And I've just realized that I don't have a variable declaration. It actually says here, I is not declared. So let's add it. Up here are my declarations. And I'm going to initialize that to zero. That's really important because on the first iteration of this loop, i will be zero, and that's going to equate to index zero of my array, which is the first element, as we know. So what I've got here is I've grabbed one word, or one line at a time from the text file. I've placed that into the array. Now let's test our output. And what am I going to add? I'm going to add the current element of the array called words. So if I annotate that, that's output. And now a do loop doesn't automatically increment the counter of my array. So I've got to do that manually. Now remember, that's a shortcut version, i plus equals 1. If you don't like that, you can go i is assigned the value of the current value of i plus 1. So in the first iteration of the loop, i is 0, equates to index 0 of the array called words. We're going to add index 0 of the array called words to the list box called list words. And then we're going to increment 0 plus 1 equals 1. So on the second iteration of the loop, word the word that we grab from the text file going into the array called words is actually going to point to index 1. And then index 1 value is going to be output into the text file. And so on and so on. Now let's test it. There we have it. These words were originally from the text file. That's its data source. But we've actually haven't gone straight from the text file to this list box. The, we've gone and put all of these lines of code, lines of school values into an array called words and then output in turn each of those elements in the array. And there you have it, using a stream reader object and a do loop to transfer data from a text file, pop it into an array and then display the contents of that array, in this case in a, li in a list box.